I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clux rotation. <clears throat> I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more <coughs> 10 MCQs on. This is, this is a new series of videos on obstructive jaundice. Today I will be discussing only on the introduction to obstructive jaundice. In that I will be discussing 10 MCQs. So you all know the importance of MCQs because in all your qualifying exam as well as in the competitive medical entrance exams like NEET PG, NEET SS, USMLE, UKMLA, all these exams, they are using only MCQs to evaluate the students. So that is the importance of MCQ. You must know how to answer or how to deal with MCQ questions. So this series of MCQ videos will give you a systematic way of revising the whole spectrum of general surgery topic by topic. So in this video, I will be discussing only the introduction to obstructive jaundice. But before going to discuss those 10 MCQs, I want you to listen that particular video on introduction on obstructive jaundice by clicking this link, go to the YouTube, um, I mean site, watch that video and again come back here and then we will discuss the 10 MCQs. So MCQ number one, 60 year old man present with progressive painless jaundice, dark urine, pale stool and weight loss over four weeks. Examination shows a palpable gallbladder. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Chronic hepatitis. B. Carcinoma, head of the pancreas. C. Gallstone disease. D. Primary biliary cholangitis. Correct answer is, of course, B. Carcinoma, head of the pancreas. Because the jaundice was painless and it is progressive also. And Courvoisier's law or Courvoisier's sign that is the palpable gallbladder is also the, uh, there that suggests a malignant obstruction most commonly from pancreatic head carcinoma. That is the correct diagnosis. A is incorrect because hepatitis usually causes hepatocellular jaundice with tender hepatomegaly. C is also incorrect because gallstones usually cause intermittent pain. That is, intermittent, not only intermittent pain, the jaundice also, if it is cholidarcholithiasis, jaundice will be intermittent and painful. And gallbladder usually not palpable if it is because of cholidarcholithiasis. And D is also incorrect, that is the primary biliary cholangitis is an autoimmune Intrahepatic cause, not painless obstruction, painful. <coughs> Reference is Bailey and Love, 28th edition, chapter 65. Coming to MCQ number 2, 45-year-old female present with intermittent right upper quadrant pain, jaundice, and fever with chills. Blood tests revealed raised bilirubin and ALP. What is the likely diagnosis? A. Viral hepatitis B. Hemolytic anemia C. Acute cholangitis D. Primary sclerosing cholangitis Correct answer is of course C. Acute cholangitis Explanation Charcot's triad that is patient is having jaundice, fever and right upper quadrant pain. It is classic for 
acute ascending cholangitis due to biliary obstruction and the infection. A is incorrect, that is viral hepatitis causes hepatocellular pattern. ALT and AST will be much more than ALP level. B is also incorrect, that is hemolytic hemolysis does not cause fever or pain. That is against it. And the primary sclerosing cholangitis causes progressive painless jaundice in young patients. So reference is subsistent textbook of surgery, 21st edition, chapter 52. Coming to MCQ 3, a patient with obstructive jaundice has a total bilirubin of 15 mg per deciliter predominantly conjugated and elevated ALP and GGT is also there. Both are elevated. What is the likely pattern? A. Hemolytic jaundice. B. Hepatocellular jaundice. C. Mixed type of jaundice. D. Cholestatic or obstructive jaundice. Of course, the correct answer is D. That is cholestatic or it is obstructive jaundice. <laughs> Because the obstruction leads to elevated direct bilirubin conjugated and cholestatic enzyme also, the enzyme ALP will be raised, GGT also will be raised. So it is a case of obstructive jaundice. A is incorrect. Hemolysis causes unconjugated hyperbilirubinia, not uh, conjugated. B is also incorrect, that is hepatocellular cause. So it's very high AST and ALT. <coughs> C is not the most specific fit here. The cholestatic obstructive jaundice is the correct answer. I mean the C, mixed type jaundice is not the correct fit. Reference is the Davidson Principles and Practice of Medicine, 24th edition. Coming to MCQ 4, 52-year-old man present with painless jaundice and pruritus. On examination, gallbladder is not palpable. Liver function test show elevated conjugated bilirubin and ALP. What is the next best investigation? A. Abdominal X-ray B. ERCP C. Ultrasound D. CT scan of the abdomen Correct answer is C. Ultrasound of the man. Why it is correct? USG is the first line investigation to detect biliary dilatation and identify gallstones or any growth or mass or lump. A is incorrect because X-rays are not helpful in soft tissue visualization. So that is not uh, helpful. B is also incorrect. ERCP is both diagnostic and therapeutic, but not the first line investigation. D is also incorrect. CT is better for staging purpose, not the initial diagnosis. Reference, Swartz Principles of Surgery, 11th edition, chapter 36. Coming to MCQ number 5, a 67-year-old female has painless jaundice. Ultrasound shows dilated intrahepatic and extrahepatic ducts, but no stones. CT reveals a distal CBD structure. What is the likely cause? A. Cholangiocarcinoma. B. Gallstone. C. Pancreatic head cancer. D. Sphincter of OD dysfunction. So the correct answer is pancreatic head cancer. Why? Distal CBD obstruction with painless jaundice is most commonly caused by carcinoma of the pancreatic head. A is incorrect, that is cholangiocarcinoma typically causes hilar obstruction. And this type of cholangiocarcinoma is known as clad skin tumor. <coughs> B is also incorrect, that is gallstone. Usually that shows stones on ultrasound. D is also incorrect because the sphincter of body dysfunction is very rare 
and present with episodic pain, not continuous pain. Reference Sebastian 21st uh, edition, Hepatobiliary Surgery Chapter. Coming to MCQ 6, a patient with obstructive jaundice is found to have non-dilated bile ducts on ultrasound. Liver enzymes show elevated bilirubin with normal ALP and GGT. What is the likely cause? A. Pancreatic tumor. B. Cholid alcoholithiasis. C. Dubin Johnson syndrome. D. Biliary stricture. The correct answer is, of course, C. Dubin Johnson syndrome. Why? It is Dubin Johnson syndrome is a benign hereditary disorder with conjugated hyperbilirubinemia but normal liver enzymes and imaging. There is no dilatation of CBD at all. Okay. All the A, B and D all are round because all these will cause ductal dilatation and elevated cholestatic markers like GGT, ALP and uh, <coughs> AST and ALT also slightly elevated. So the reference is Davidson's 24th edition of uh, medical book and Robbins pathology. Coming to MCQ 7, a 59-year-old man with obstructive jaundice has bilirubin of 18 mg per deciliter and deranged clotting. Before ERCP, what should be done? He is having, there is clotting problem. He is obstructive jaundice. So A, you have to administer insulin. B, blood transfusion. You have to administer vitamin K injection. D, give oral antibiotics. Which is the correct answer? Of course, the correct answer is C. You have to give vitamin K injection because patient is having deranged clotting. Vitamin K corrects coagulopathy due to impaired absorption of fat-soluble vitamins in cholestasis. So vitamin K is ADAC. It is a fat-soluble vitamin. It won't get absorbed from the gut. <laughs> And you had to give in, in case of obstructive jaundice. So you had to give it in injection form, vitamin K. A is incorrect. Administer insulin, it's not, not related unless patient is diabetic. Diabetic means we have to give insulin, otherwise there is no need. Blood transfusion not indicated unless patient is anemic. Antibiotics may be given, but don't correct coagulopathy. Okay, that is the thing. Reference is the 28th edition of Bailey in Love, Chapter 65. Coming to MCQ 8, which structure forms the posterior boundary of epiploic or Winslow's foramen? Foramen, sorry, foramen. So, A is hepatic artery, B, inferior vena cava, C, common bile duct, D, portal vein. The correct answer is B, inferior vena cava. Explanation, the epiploic foramen is bounded posteriorly by IVC, anteriorly by the portal triad. Portal triad include hepatic duct, hepatic artery and portal vein. So all three are anterior relation. A and C, hepatic artery and common bile duct, these are anterior structures. D also, I told all the portal thread, even the, uh, I mean the portal vein is also part of the portal thread, so that is also anterior, it's not posterior. So the posterior relation to epiploic foramen or foramen of Winslow is IVC. Coming to MCQ 9, which of the following is the first line imaging modality for suspected obstructive jaundice? What is the first investigation you will do if you are dealing with a case of obstructive jaundice? A. CT scan. B. MRI. C. Ultrasound. D. Endoscopy. Of course, correct answer is C. Ultrasound. 
this is the first line investigation not the investigation of choice is of course abstract is and this is ercp it is not given here at all the initial investigation is of course you can do an ultrasound ultrasound is non invasive and effective in detecting ductal dilatation only it cannot ultrasound cannot pick up the stones in the or even the growth in the cbd or stone it cannot pick up but it can pick up the ductal dilatation for that okay initial investigation because it is cheap and it is non invasive also we can do it as a initial investigation a is incorrect ct is used for staging tumors b mrcp is sensitive but not it is not okay this is the best investigation but it is not the first line investigation okay d is also wrong endoscopy it is not not the imaging of choice for to find out pathology in the in the extra hepatic biliary ducts endoscopy is useless reference is sebistan 25 21st edition coming to mcq 10 which of the following symptoms is least likely in obstructive jaundice a dark urine b pale stool itching and d hematemesis of course the correct answer is hematemesis because apart from hematemesis all three can present in obstructive jaundice obstructive jaundice causes bilirubin accumulation not gi bleeding a b c all are incorrect classic features due to reduced bile excretion reference again davidson's 24th edition so these are the reference book i told you the first two are problem based book books the hand and muscle and the clinical surgery by mohan d silvas second edition excellent books problem oriented books because all other books the standard books like bailey and love sebastian swartz all are disease based system wise they will discuss but these two books problem based teaching will be there these books are fantastic books all other books are case based scenarios are there you can go to any one of these books and you can practice so many case based scenarios are there in these books you can click this link go and watch a video in my channel regarding what are the books available for general surgeon for you to become an expert in general surgery so you can click and watch that video also this is a book written by me for my own students you can it is having nine modules and more than 120 case scenarios you can click this first link you can download this book or if you want to see my teaching videos the same nine modules you can click this one you can watch the playlist of videos on the from the same book so thank you very much for watching this video if you think that all these videos my videos in my youtube channel are very helpful for you please share them in your social media thank you once again for watching this video let us meet in an yet another episode until then bye bye